Hello, 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 Internet. This is a different type of uh, stream because we do a lot of like coding streams throughout the week. This is a user group meeting because uh, there's a little thing called the pandemic that happened. And we, uh, you know, uh, we get together for big conferences, but we get to, you know, hang out um, on the Internet together. And with me today, I have my wonderful friend over here. No, here, here. There you go. High five. Gary, 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 how are you? <laughs> Somewhere, there you go. Just like that. There you go. Uh, somewhere, there you go. High five. Now, I've known Carrie for years and years, uh, but uh, she tells me she is Star Wars uh, years old, maybe, because it's Carrie's birthday. Look at that. So she has graciously agreed, I don't know why, to spend her birthday evening with us here on stream. So, Carrie, how are you doing? And happy, happy birthday to you. Well, thank you. Of course, I'd like to spend it with my friends in in the internet. All my friends are in my monitor, so <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it, it's it's a great time. So I'm looking forward to getting my gadgets out and playing around with them. And you know, considering uh, I think one of the last user group meetings that I went uh, for you, and actually I think it was this one was an IoT talk, and it ended up mm. being one of those. Worst blizzards of gosh, was that 2018? I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> it was an adventure. No mm -hmm. bad roads, no snow this time. So yeah, yeah. But yes, I am Star Wars years old today. So uh, I really enjoy that. I always know how old I am because I just have to look at how old Star Wars <laughs> is. <laughs> oh, Carrie is amazing, and you know, thank you for for joining us uh, this evening. Um, so. Uh, you might be wondering, what is this user group? What are we doing? So let's do, you know, one to two minutes of housekeeping, and then I'll head, hand it over to um, to Carrie here. Let's see. Can we share my screen? Does technology work with us today? All right. There, that, and there. All right. So welcome, people. Welcome, welcome. Um, we are uh, doing this user group. Uh, if you are looking around for uh, who we are, what we do, um, if you search for any of these, you're not going to find us because um, we have evolved over time. We actually started back in like 2007, 2008 timeframe as the Windows Phone user group. That went uh, strong for about three years. <laughs> then we switched to Windows, which was generic enough. Then we said, okay, let's just do App Dev, which is generic enough, uh, and Columbus. You know? And then the pandemic said, eh, let's just do everything online. So unless we are going off to Mars or another planet and living somewhere else, something global, or if we switch galaxies, then we might have to change the user group name again. But unless we do that, we are fine. So we are the global active user group. So please tell your friends uh, about us. We just hang out right here every third Monday of the month from your couch, from your work desk, uh, wherever you might be. Uh, so we have a website, we have a meetup group, we have uh, a Twitter handle. So, you know, tell your friends, bring them along. And we are pretty friendly, so chat room, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions, uh, say whatever you or your heart desires, as long as it's friendly. Uh, so we do have some sponsors who help us, you know, put this thing together, Microsoft and Progress, and, and Visual Studio is a partner, which I'll talk to you about. Um, we do try to highlight some things that are going on. Uh, so we still have our kind of roots in the, you know, Midwest of the Americas. So I highlight some of our sister user groups. This is the .NET user group, and I was actually there last uh, month. Uh, they are starting to meet in person. Uh, so it looks like our good friend Alan Barber is going to talk about CQRS this month. They meet the fourth um, Thursday of each month. Some, some months it ends up being the same week, uh, but not this month. So that's coming up next uh, week, next Thursday. So if you are in the Columbus area, uh, do drop by. I think they're trying to set it up so that they can stream, but, you know, an in-person event that's also being streamed needs a little bit of, you know, hardware support. Uh, so they're trying to figure all of that out. Uh, if you are, again, in the Midwest and you don't mind driving a little bit and, you know, want to hang out with your fellow geeks and nerds at a tech conference. Uh, so Carrie uh, was um, with me at a big one called Star Trek. That was last week, was it? No, two weeks ago. It was ago. the sixth, 10 days ago. Six weeks, yeah, sixth. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, um, it was a tech and a flick. So we did all tech content for the whole day. This was at a big, uh, you know, movie theater. And then we all watched... Uh, um, uh, the um, Doctor Strange uh, Multiverse of Madness. And 
I should ask you, Carrie, how did you like it? Or did you watch it? I did. I, I can honestly say that um, I had my son with me. He, he was uh, a volunteer. And I'm lucky that he wasn't hitting me whenever I was laughing. So I'll just say that. <laughs> there was a lot of, uh, a lot of um, I guess, hints towards another older movie that I really love. And I caught it right away. And then the post credits yeah. just proved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, they like dropping a lot of, you know, little nods here and there to you know, older mm -hmm. films or, you know, stuff that, that they have shown in other parts of the uh, Marvel multiverse. I, I was, I, I enjoyed it. it. It was entertainment, but, you know, some parts of it are like, uh, it, and it's just like a little too much of magic. Like at one point, like anything is possible, right? So that was my only gripe on some of the things, but I get it. It's, you know, multi universe uh, magic. So uh, it was, that was fun. Uh, but looking ahead at, you know, the rest of summer, uh, early fall, we do have some good stuff coming up. This is my good friend Jonathan Tower and his um, a bunch of folks who put together Beer City Code. This is up in um, Grand Rapids, Michigan, one day conference. If you uh, are up and uh, willing to drive up a little bit, great content. Then we have KCDC, which is, uh, you know, all of these things are early to mid August. This is a big conference. This is uh, Jonathan Mills and Jeff Strauss and uh, everybody else at Kansas City who helped out. Uh, this is a big, big conference, like 2,000 people uh, type conference. Uh, you know, three days of content. So speakers from all around the world, really good stuff. And then we have Code Palooza. This is Chad Green and his um, group of folks who put together uh, a conference in Louisville, Kentucky. That's coming up on uh, late August, August 17th to 19th. So uh, most of these are in person. They might have an online or a virtual experience as well. Uh, speaking of you know big conferences, uh, we do partner with uh, Visual Studio Live, and they put together a series of conferences all around the country. And, like these are the big, big shows uh, in big cities and with lots of folks. So the next big one that's coming up is. Uh, Visual Studio Live in uh, Austin, Texas. That's uh, mid-June, I think. I am speaking, I should know. But it's coming up in uh, Austin, and the next one is in Redmond. The next one is in San Diego. Then they go to Orlando. And if you uh, want to go to one of these big conferences, we do get a big you know, discount as a user group. Um, so um, what else am I missing? Uh, Carrie, anything else uh, that's up and coming that you can think of? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Yeah. But, you know, uh, a lot of conferences are starting to come back, which is really nice to see. Yeah, Dev Intersection yeah. should be the end of October. Yeah, Dev Intersection as well. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they just had it in, in March, but then the fall show should be, uh, you know, October or November. So, yep. all right, and rolls. we do have the beautiful Carrie Pyatt here with us. Uh, she does everything under the sun that you can think of developer-wise. Uh, and you have, Carrie, the privilege of talking to somebody who has absolutely zero knowledge about Azure Percept. Like, I didn't even know this was a thing until you said uh, you wanted to speak about it. And I know you have gadgets. I know it does AI and some IoT. I just have no clue. So expect a ton of very silly questions as we go along. But thank you for your time. Thank you for, you know, um, spending an hour of your birthday with us. And I feel you know, mildly bad about it, but here you are, you're a good sport, so we are glad to have you. So with that, I am going to stop my screen and bring up yours. And let's see if I can move some windows back around. Um, yeah, we are good to go and the floor is yours. Yeah, I'm just gonna mess around with my screens here just for a moment. This way I can still see you. All well, right. You, you don't have to. I'm just saying. <laughs> now I don't know where my presentation went. All right, there it goes. Yeah, we still see it. <laughs> All right. So I am going to talk to you today about Azure Percept, which is IoT and AI at the edge. Now, the good news about this is that it's not difficult. So... What you're going to love is how accessible it is and how easy it is to get started. So a little bit about me, um, as you already mentioned, I'm Carrie Payette. You can always find me tinkering with microcontrollers and sensors, but um, obviously part of my day job is going to be big data and AI. So 
Um, with IoT comes a lot of data, so I do a lot of work in machine learning, um, the IoT spaces, and of course, just big data, data warehousing um, in particular. So feel free to reach out to me anytime. You can find me on Twitter at Carrie Payette. My blog is codingbandit.com. Um, Trillium Innovations is uh, my personal company, but I am a Slyance partner, so very proud partner of Slyance. Really great people. So let's go ahead and dive in to what exactly is Azure Percept. So Azure Percept is a combination of hardware, software, and services that are aimed to accelerate the business implementations of IoT and AI at the edge. So the hardware is currently what's called the Azure Percept DK. DK stands for development kit. So it sounds really, you know, fantastic and high tech, but it really means development kit. Um, and that's available to purchase in certain areas of the world. So um, it retails for $349. And that includes this thing right here, which is the base unit, the thing with the little antennas on it. There's also an ethernet port on it, but um, you also have the ability to just head it up with Wi-Fi. And then this is the camera module right here, which is called the um, Percept Vision device. Uh, what's really nice about these things is that you have the hardware, but if you notice, like a considerable portion of the hardware is heat sinks. So one thing that you're not going to find on these things is like bearing based fans or fans at all in particular. So these heat sinks make sure that these um, devices are extremely quiet. So that's what's uh, <laughs> That's what 90% of the body of these devices are, is just the heat sink so it doesn't overheat. The Percept Vision device actually has, you'll only see one cable in this image and one cable on my device here, but each device actually has uh, connectors to work up to two cameras. And of course, depending on your deployment, you can have as many as you want. So you're not limited to two cameras, it's just uh, that's what the, the device itself is limited. All right, so I have I'll... questions. Yeah, <laughs> already, man, that was cool. yes. I, I, I told you I will have plenty of you know dumb questions to go on. Okay, <laughs> um, is this a new service? I wouldn't call it new. I think it's been around. I'm going to say upwards of two years now. Okay, so it's not in like previous out out. Um. Yeah, well, it's hardware that is production ready. So you have the DK module, they call it development kit, but honestly, it's production ready devices. So these things, the, there's actually, when I get it on the, the camera here in a moment, actually, I could probably show the camera right now. Let me go off script here. So this is actually my Ooh. desktop right here. And what you see is here's the camera. And then here is um, the actual device. And now I'm trying to remember what I was going to show you. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I, I, I got questions right here. Okay. Is this, to me at least, this is the first time I'm seeing um, Azure trying to sell you hardware. Is that mm -hmm. accurate? It is. Um, so it is an Azure certified device. But okay. you can see here the actual maker is Asus. Asus. Yeah. What about the camera? Who makes that? So the camera is actually a, an Intel, and I'm going to say this wrong, Modvibius Myriad 10. Okay. So it's a VPU. And actually what I was going to talk about is uh, it has, like if you're in manufacturing or um, like in factories, there's those railings that are pretty much standard. You can stick those railings on the wall and these will slide right in. That was what I was trying to show you. Okay. Standard wise. So yes, so the the vision module, this thing right here, the camera itself is an Intel camera. Um, it has basically, it's a, a VPU. And I think the, the actual camera model is the MA2085. So um, 
what why are they including the camera couldn't any camera just work well this is vision at the edge right okay so what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually have a stream set up and the streaming video will come from this camera and from there we will either use like a default model or we'll build our own model to identify things in the stream hmm. so where I was uh, talking about was the base unit. Here's the camera unit. And then the, the third unit is the, the audio module. So when you're talking about AI, a lot of people will think about, you know, their virtual assistants a lot. So you might have the one that starts with the G or the one that starts with the Just, A. Don't, don't say the name. <laughs> but you can do that exact same thing. And actually you can mess around with that too um, and demo that here as well. So you have essentially what cognitive services are and what AI really is, is a way of mi like mimicking, if you will, human knowledge. So when you're a human going in, some of the senses that you use are um, sight and hearing. Obviously, I don't think we've gone as far as taste yet, though that would be cool. But <laughs> we'll, we'll stick with sight and hearing. So what this device does is it makes it accessible to you with one plug and play device. Like when I, I actually re-imaged this thing today and it's up and running out of the box, connected to the cloud within 10 minutes. Hmm. So it's what, literally. What just, is it running though? It is running a Linux version. Hmm. Okay. So on top of that, um, you have the ability to run because it is an IOT edge device. IOT edge devices can run Dockerized containers. Mm -hmm. So you have the ability to even implement your own modules, if you will, and deploy them as you normally would into any IOT edge um, device itself. Ooh, well, that didn't go, that didn't recover very well. Oh, there we go. All right. But anyway, so those, those are the three things and the, Audio device, though, I need to call out that it's actually available separately. So um, it's not part of that 349. It's one of those optional add-ons that you can add. And of course, when you're somebody like me and it comes to gadgetry, um, I'm always going to buy it. So actually, this is my second one because uh, my first audio module did not survive its second trip to Dev Intersection. <laughs> So I have a nice little RMA unit and this one actually I got, uh, I replaced it this, this week. So I did that just for you, Sam. Oh, <laughs> I, I do go, go back to the question I was trying to, maybe I phrased it wrong. So sure. I, I get, I get the AI part and I get the, the edge part, but mm -hmm. if the service is providing you with, you know, the computing and you are building up the model, couldn't like I'm just trying to see like could you work with a different audio unit or a different camera? You can, but it's not part of this fully integrated approach. I so see. there's nothing stopping you. Like you can go in and like we're going to be using custom vision today, but you can go in and create your own modules, export those, and run them on any device you want, like a Raspberry Pi or or what have you. But the Azure Percept is really geared towards people that want a plug and play mm -hmm. setup. Like it's got all the, it care, it takes care of the infrastructure for you, the messaging for you, takes care of um, connectivity, the registration. So when you have a regular IOT type solution, you have to worry about provisioning the device, registering the device, making sure it connects, making sure that you have the right modules deployed on the edge device. Like if you're, if you're loading your own mod, model, for instance, those are all steps that you have to take. Now, yeah. what Azure Percept does is it kind of, I wouldn't put it to like a wizard level, but it's certainly around that same level. It makes the barrier of entry so much lower. So it's not a scary thing to get into that you can buy this device and you can be confident that you'll have something up and running and useful in very quick amount of time. So it's kind of like the, uh, when you're talking about um, 
like IoT solutions, for instance, you have IoT Central, which is like the software as a service, whereas you have like an IoT solution where you're setting up all the architecture. This is kind of like the equivalent to the IoT Central, but on the hardware side. <laughs> Got it. All right. So the last part of the puzzle here is software. So there is actually something called the Percept Studio. So one of the things I noticed Microsoft is doing a lot is they, they're making a lot of studios <laughs> that uh, like when you're working, like I work in Synapse all the time and it's Synapse Studio and you go into, you know, AI and it's AI Studio and then it's Speech Studio and it's a lot of studios. But what's nice about these studios is the UIs are very similar and you're not going to get lost, <laughs> yeah. but True to form, there's Azure Percept Studio. <laughs> so you're able to, again, go in and have that focused experience on what you're working with. Um, so talking a little bit about the way to set this up. So there's a couple different ways of, of doing it. So you essentially get box a box um, with the base unit and the vision mod modules. And uh, when you take it out of the box, it works like one of those things that it has it, it beacons its own Wi-Fi and you can connect to it and um, you can optionally connect it to your own Wi-Fi or in this case, actually, I don't need to have the antennas on it. Um, I have it connected to Ethernet right now. But uh, essentially, it goes through a wizard step by step. If you don't have an IoT hub, you can tell it to deploy one for you you tell it the name that you want it to deploy to, but it does all of that back end work, setting up the infrastructure all for you. Makes sense. Now, um, the uh, Percept Studio, I'm guessing that's a web app? It is, so. Okay, and that's yeah. like through the Azure portal, pretty much? Mm -hmm. Yep, so if I bring up here, so I'll just go into the Azure portal here but you just go into the search and start typing Percept and Azure Percept Studio will show up. And there you go. You're essentially in there. And then after the setup, you'll have a device. And of course, you know, I was very creative in my naming and I named it Percept One. <laughs> but uh, essentially what you are... Um, the only thing that it actually deploys for you is an IoT hub, because obviously that's the way that the communication has to be made. And then Percept Studio will actually integ integrate with IoT hub to do things like the module, like Docker module, um, IoT edge module deployments. So that is how that works. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to yeah, exactly this image here. So, um, the the base module has the antenna so it can you know beacon out its own you know wi-fi mm -hmm. uh network but you said you can also plug your ethernet into this or yep. connect it to your home wi-fi do the other two need to be wired in into the base model yes so um like if i go back to my overhead here so here's um the side of the base module and you'll see I have my Ethernet connected. Yeah. There is a USB-C connector right here that goes mm -hmm. out to the uh, vision module. And there's also two USB ports, just regular USB. And that USB goes to the um, audio, audio module. module. Mm -hmm. I keep wanting to say odd, audio and module at the same time, <laughs> so I say audio. <laughs> Maybe it's like the hand sanitizer thing. It's like sanitizer. It's all together now. We don't understand. Uh, <laughs> and do they work, like since they're meant to be IoT, would they work on just the Wi-Fi signal? Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely can. Just uh, I have uh, I have so much interference in this room, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So anytime I can go on Ethernet, I choose Ethernet. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> same thing like bluetooth devices don't stand a chance in my room so <laughs> i'm fully wired right now <laughs> the things you get as a geek 
Bluetooth it doesn't work too much of stuff, too many devices. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. All right. Okay. All right. So one of the, the things that's really approachable, again, about uh, Azure Percept is out of the box that there is demos that are available to you. Now, we'll go through a couple of those in the demos. But essentially what happens is with a, I mean, I, I'll say, a lot of people say single click, but it's really a few clicks. But you're able to have um, pre-trained models that you can deploy to your device. So some of them are general object detection, which is what's um, deployed by default onto the, onto the device. There's people detection, there's products on the shelf, and I think it's trained for bananas and uh, vehicle detection. So if you have like a whole bunch of bananas that you want to have counted, <laughs> go ahead and put that on a table and there you go. Um, so above and beyond just the straight up um, demos, there's also a couple end-to-end -end scenarios when it comes to the, the vision. Um, some of those will require extra Azure resources. So that would be like storage accounts, for instance, um, maybe a web app, you know, whatever it needs to deploy. But again, the Percept environment will handle those deployments. But some of those end-to-end -end scenarios are like the one that you see on the screen right now is the people counting. So this comes in handy when you have... Um, well, especially, I guess, when you're talking about in pandemic times, when you have to limit the amount of people that are in a lobby, for instance, or making sure that people have, you know, the necessary space between them. So you can actually um, create a region and find out how many people are within a bounding box, for instance. Mm -hmm. So you could see that that's happening right here. But this is one of those demos that essentially you're given right out of the box. So if you want to start there and build upon that, you have the ability to do that. So obviously they're trying to hit, you know, like the 80, 20 with some of these things. And I think they did a, a fairly good job of yeah. doing that. So again, this one will require some additional um, Azure resource deployments, but again, all of that is handled directly within um, the UI. Okay, one more question here. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you mentioned that these are, you know, edge uh, devices, uh, but for most of the processing uh, or any any conditional things you might have, like as a trigger, if there is some action to be taken, maybe you're calling into other services or storing it, that happens at the base module level, right? Yeah, you definitely can. So one of the features of IoT Edge is the mes messaging pipeline. So what you can do is um, one of the outputs of these modules would be the telemetry. So if we have like a, this people counting, for instance, you'll probably have a series of um, bounding boxes and number of people type telemetry coming through. And part of that output being sent up to the, the cloud goes through like a messaging pipeline. So you have the ability to create a module that will listen for the output of the, like the I module in this case, or I guess the people counting module. And you'll be able to, if you need to do that processing on the device, you can do that there. Now on the flip side, if it's something that doesn't need like an instantaneous reaction uh, from the device itself, you can actually push that processing up to the cloud. So mm -hmm. all of this telemetry is going through IoT Hub. So IoT Hub, you can um, set an output going through Stream Analytics, for instance, and you could create SQL-like queries over windowing functions and identify, you know, Hmm. Did you freeze, Carrie? Can you still hear me? Too much action. Triggering. Oh, maybe I guess so. <laughs> Wait, you can hear me now, um, but yeah. I, I I couldn't hear you for like a second or two in there. Um, okay, I so was talking about stream analytics. So if you wanted to do downstream processing, you could um, 
set an output to your IoT hub into stream analytics and hmm. um, essentially use SQL-like queries to right, right. determine if a certain scenario is happening, and then you can trigger things that way too. So what, what I was trying to get to is like, how much computing do you need on the device itself? Like when you said deploy a model, like how much uh, of that, and is it going to be dependent on your model or how much computing you're asking it to do? Right, so the actual device itself, obviously the hardware has some limitations. I don't know offhand what those limitations are, but typically if you have a focused model that you're deploying, like if I have a vision model, um, you'll want to make sure that it's really focused into your use case. Because you could always do a generic, like even the general object one, I'm sure is not a small device, like a small model, I guess you could say, um, that's already put on the device by default. But if, for instance, you're looking for, you know, a can of Pepsi inside of your stream and you want to count how many cans of Pepsi are on the tables in the lobby or something like that, um, you'll want to really tweak your model into just looking for those cans of Pepsi. Because if you go in saying, I want to identify, you know, the world, mm -hmm. that's going to make your model larger and larger and larger. But if you have a focused business purpose right. that you're looking for something specific, go ahead and create a specific model that is small and compact that you can deploy easily, not worry about performance. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you're also eating into like computational performance, and uh, mm -hmm. I actually have a real world like similar thing. It's it's not IoT, but maybe it kind of is. So we have uh, a security camera. Um, in, in on our front door and anytime anything happens within a certain region it can trigger an alarm and all of my virtual things you know they all buzz to say hey there's somebody at the front door <laughs> now it can be smart enough to say i don't want like a cat or a dog or anything triggering and i want humans um, that i want a trigger for but the moment I add that, uh, that's an extra bit of processing that it has to do on the device before it comes, uh, you know, to the like the Alexa type devices or the, the home modules. It slows down considerably, and the battery uh, lasts one month as compared to three months. So, oh wow! Yeah, it, there, there's a price to pay on how much computation we do. Wow, you wouldn't think that that's. Yeah. I wonder if they're trying to actually identify the person. They, they could. I think that's the next <laughs> thing. Like, don't trigger for my kid or <laughs> Maybe. You know, my family members. Uh, but for anybody else, trigger that. So I think that's what they're kind of gearing up towards. But it, it definitely takes a toll the moment you say, identify what it is uh, at the door. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, definitely, like I said, be terse with your models whenever you can. It's nice to throw in the kitchen sink. But, you know, as soon as you do that, your, your model is going to get exponentially larger. So that just means bad things for performance. But there's a, on these devices themselves is a pretty beef, beefy um, device. It's, so uh, it runs like the general model fairly easily. So I don't think you're going to hit too many issues unless like you're really trying to identify too much. All right, let's uh, move here. So advanced development. So um, some of the things that we're going to be using today are going to be specifically related to custom vision. So custom vision, if you're not already aware, it's a way to visually compose your own vision models. So you can upload a series of images, tag them, and then um, the UI will, you can train a model that can then be deployed to your device um, all visually. So I'm not writing, actually, I don't think I'm writing a bit of code at all in this presentation. <laughs> but if you wanted to, you can create your own vision models using your own frameworks that you want to use. So this can be like if you're comfortable with TensorFlow or Py PyTorch. So the only thing that you need to make sure that you do if you are bringing your own model is that it has to be able to be converted into OpenVINO IR. And all operations and ops layers are supported by 
Open Vino version 2021.1. So you can use uh, tools such as like e Open Vino Workbench, and you can convert those models there. Um, another thing, though, too, is that, you know, I did C++ in college. It's been a really long time. I'm not super comfortable in C++, but what you have to do is you have to develop a C++ subclass to be able to utilize that model inside of uh, a deployment. So it might sound daunting, but there are examples and tutorials out on GitHub for that as well as um, sample notebooks too, to, um, to train custom models for deployment as well. So imagine developing your own custom models and you can use things for spatial analysis, safety scenarios, and, and tons more. So I can provide a couple links. Uh, I guess I'll provide it afterwards. I can't. I, I, I looked at the OpenVINO uh, link. Uh, oh, okay. Can, can you describe what OpenVINO to, is to us in just like elevator pitch, one minute? So it's really a, just another flavor of, uh, of model, if you will. So it's like a format. So it's so open um, visual interface and neural network optimization. Is it like an Intel thing or no, it's an open standard pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So the, a lot of times when you have like the open type scenarios, actually, I just clicked on your link. So thank you very much for that. So um, essentially it, it's just uh, another tool. So inside the, the actual um, device itself, it's using OpenVINO to essentially wrap the model. So you can see that you can have a bunch of different model types. So Onyx is one of the most common ones. But what OpenVINO does is it essentially grabs that model, wraps it in such a way that you have good performance going to any of the, the VPUs and GPUs that are, are consuming it. So that is essentially the model that the Azure Percept is using as well. So that is where that comes into play. I don't know if that answers your question or not. Yeah, yeah it does. Oh, OK. <laughs> but you know, lots to learn here. You know, you can, you can easily go off on a tangent and you know, uh, there's a lot here. Definitely, definitely. But anyway, that C++ subclass Again, don't feel afraid of it. There's examples and tutorials on how to do that. Um, I will provide a couple. Actually, I might be able to grab those links and drop them in here. See so if I can get back to my presentation. I'll still be afraid. <laughs> well, no, you don't have to be. But but the thing is, is that's only if you want to go into like those lower level implementations. Like what we're going to mess around with today. Um, you don't have to code anything. All right. So I provided the, the links down there. But I'm going to say let's stop all that presentation hoopla. And let's actually get into development of this thing. All right. So out of the box, um, not that browser. Which browser? Woohoo! There we go. So out of the box, you essentially connect your device. You'll be able to um, set it up on the network. And then there's a wizard that will essentially bring you through provisioning an IoT hub if you don't have one already, giving your device a name. And then essentially it'll go ahead and do its thing. And you'll land into this Azure Percept Studio. As you saw, we just went into the Azure portal and searched for Azure Percept and Azure Percept Studio came, comes in. Now the device itself, I named it Percept One, and then again, that was right inside of that wizard. And Percept One is a real IoT device. So if I select this and go into it, you'll see here's some of the device information. Um, I can also view this device inside of IoT Hub. So the infrastructure below it is still using IoT Hub. So here's Percept 1 in my Percept Hub 42, which is what I named my IoT Hub. And you can see a bunch of IoT Edge modules in here. So again, all of these modules, like when we have 
the ear speech client module, the image eye module, and what have you. That Those are all Dockerized modules. So those are IoT modules that you're able to deploy to that. So if you have business logic that you want to look at the output of the telemetry of the eye module, for instance, you can create in C-sharp, in Node, or whatever language that you want, create a Dockerized container that will do just that. And you would deploy it as you normally would inside of IoT Hub. So I can go in here and I could add like stream analytics, marketplace module. So if I want to do simulated temperature for some reason, I can go ahead and add those edge modules and deploy them to my device um, as such. Now, the routes is where I talk about this is how the messaging works. So you can see that the Azure I module to IoT Hub route takes the messages that are being created and generated inside of the Azure I module. So again, that's that module that's controlling like the camera there. But you can see that there's an outputs here. So into upstream means that sends all telemetry up to the IoT Hub. Now, if you wanted to, and you can say, Pretend that we went and we deployed something else. And we could say our something else module. And you can, you can say, um, you can es essentially direct your IoT hub messages into, you know, my something else module. And that is how you can, if you need to do processing inside of the device itself. So if you need to trigger something instantaneously and you can't wait for that cloud round trip, through the routing, you can intercept or have like a duplicate. Basically, you're listening on that channel for the telemetry. Um, obviously, we didn't create a something else module, but the module name will essentially be like that that results here. So it's saying grab all those outputs and send it into my module for further processing. And then you would have that input inside of your Docker container code and you would do whatever you need to do there. So that's what how the messaging works on IoT Edge. But anyway, obviously I'm not gonna save that, but uh, you can see here that we have like multiple modules. I didn't deploy any of those. Percept Studio deployed all of the things that it needed to do by default. So um, you don't have to worry about going into those details if you don't want to. All right, so the second thing here is, so I'm still in my device. I'm back in Percept Studio and devices and I've opened up my device. Another thing that you're able to do is um, you can go into the vision and you can view your stream. And then give it a second here. Oh, this there's my very, This is very meta. Very. <laughs> IoT oh, no. with AI through a stream. Oh, look at you. <laughs> there's my chair and there's my person. <laughs> Yeah, I, don't, I didn't really want to show all that, but whatever. All right. So I can show, I don't know, what else should I show? We'll detect a pen. So by default, the uh, it's a toothbrush now. <laughs> it can, can be used as a toothbrush if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, it's because it's trying to detect me. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of the way here. Here. Chair, chair, person, toothbrush. Okay, apparently my pen is a toothbrush. But <laughs> the thing is, is this is that generic uh, model. So this is like the general model. Let's see if I grab glasses. Hair dryer. Uh, <laughs> toothbrush. All right, it's not the greatest general model. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so while, while we are speaking, uh, uh, Dakota, the official, uh, thank you. Thank you for the raid. Uh, hey, Austin Gill. Um, so, uh, yeah, the machines <laughs> will take over and make us use our pens as toothbrushes. Why not? <laughs> Apparently, everything's a toothbrush. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to think about this one. 
Yeah. Oh, that is a person. No, it's still the you're still the person. It's a tennis ball. <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of use Sports it as a tennis ball. ball. That's close enough. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is funny. <laughs> All right, so that is the live stream, and that's the default model that gets deployed um, with it. But what I've done is I've actually created an. You know, you remember how at Stir Trek I went and I took a whole bunch of stickers? Yes. I don't know where I put them. <laughs> so it's I, been I, a long day. You had your kid with you. and Yeah, no worries. Leave, leave it to me. I'll find it like 20 minutes after this presentation. <laughs> but anyway, so inside of the Percept Studio, so we, we saw you know, the default implementation of that audio module, right? So let's go ahead and um, take a look at speech. And can, I've can, created... Can I, no, sorry, before you go into speech, can I ask you one more question on the on the vision? So... Actually, can, I'm going to... I said speech by accident. Oh, okay, yeah, you're, you're still talking vision. Okay. <laughs> so, like, from somebody who doesn't know anything about Percept, like, I have used Azure Cognitive Services or other services where the the AI part is pretty much built into the cloud service, right? You give mm -hmm. it chicken versus the... Well, what's the dog brand? Um, the Labradoodle, maybe? Or that looks like almost like fried chicken or, you know, uh, avocado versus, like, uh, those, like, classic vision detection things. That yeah, processing... like Chihuahua and, Chihuahua, like, yeah. and quesadilla. <laughs> Or muffin, <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. that's it. You know, this this is what we have done with computing. Like we mm -hmm. have gotten to the really hard problems. So that processing happens in the cloud. But here, when you are showing us that feed, the person, the chair, that is happening on the IoT device itself. Yes. Yeah. And that's why it's almost like real time. It's not a, not even talking to the base unit. It can it has its own Correct. model to do it. Yeah, it's still like, don't get me wrong, it's still sending telemetry up to the cloud, yeah. but all of the object detection is happening in the model that's been deployed mm -hmm. to um, to the device itself. So I meant to say vision. Um, I have a code it live vision project that I've already created. So it takes a little bit of time to train things up, but um, I have 79 images there. So if I wanted to take a look at it in custom vision, Peter, I thought you lost the stickers. Now you are trying to get the stickers. I started. have older ones. Oh, oh my goodness. That's a oh, lot yeah. of stickers. <laughs> well, you need, when you're training a model inside of customvision.ai, you need to upload at least 15 samples of each mm -hmm. tag. So I went and I uploaded, there's .NET Ninja. That is a very old sticker. <laughs> It is. It is. Well, wait till you see. I've got more. Okay. There's a Lone Wolf Lab. So Calvin Allen, this is his sticker. Mm-hmm. Lone uh, Wolf. Interesting. Yep. Power BI. And then I found one, Progress Ninjas. We saw oh, happily a Progress Ninja as well. Yeah. So I had to geek out, geek out there. And then, of course, Saliance, awesome company is uh, my last one there. So I uploaded 15, 17, 15, 17, because I couldn't count to 15 apparently a couple times. But that's okay. Having more just means that your model will be more accurate. <laughs> so I went ahead and I did that and I used custom vision.ai to train it. So again, not writing any code. I'm just uploading, manually uploading images and tagging them. Um, so if I come in here, you can see that I grabbed a rectangle around what the piece of the image is that I'm tagging, and then Saliance is my label here. So that, in a nutshell, is what uh, a custom vision.ai project is. So you can just go to them and create them, um, going to custom vision.ai, and of course it keeps going, diving in, but that's okay. Yeah. You know, you, do... You're essentially, no, sorry, go on. Yeah, I do recommend, though, um, if you're going to use Percept with the Custom Vision AI solution, let the Percept Studio create it. There's some weird little linkage issue if you don't let it, uh, let uh, Percept Studio create it. It just won't show up. So to make life easier on you, <laughs> you 
you could uh, add, like you could just say, add new one, have Percept Studio create it, and then that link will be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have uh, you have a model, you are given it like some 70 plus pictures, and now mm -hmm. it knows the difference between Salience and the Ninja sticker? It should. I haven't tested this model yet, but by oh. the looks of it, it should be fairly good. So um, another option that you have too is you can actually capture images. Um, you can say like one frame every five seconds and the Percept will actually take a picture every five seconds and send it up to custom.ai and then you could go in later and tag them. I didn't do that, um, but you definitely can. And you could say up to 25 images for instance. But obviously, I've, I created them with my iPhone, so we'll see how this camera picks them up. I obviously, I did all the tagging. The tagging does happen inside of uh, inside of customvision.ai in this case. And I'm going back, clicking around too much. All right, so here is my evaluate and deploy. So every time you train your model, you'll have a new iteration. So throw more images at it, the more accurate things will be. But I can say, okay, this looks fairly good. I pre-trained it, probably takes about 15, 20 minutes to train. So that's why I did it uh, beforehand. So I'm gonna go ahead and deploy this model. So what this is doing now is it's going to replace on my device, the model from that general model to the specific one for these stickers. So I have mm -hmm. the stickers, you know, sitting in front of me here. So I'm just grabbing them in my hand. And the can. way Percept uh, is reachable from the portal is because the portal is on the same network or on, on Wi-Fi? It's, it's going through the internet right now. So okay. what's happening is mm -hmm. Percept Studio is interacting with that IoT hub that I just showed you where right. the modules were. Yep. And it's updating that I module with a new model. Yep. So I'm yep. taking that general one that thought everything was a toothbrush and it's replacing it now with my specific sticker one. Do, do they show you like how big the model is when you deploy? Um, I don't think it shows you that, but inside of custom vision, you can export models like into Onyx format and take a look at it. But um, I don't think it tells us off the hand just tells us how many images there are. So not really. All right, well, let's go back to our... And while we are deploying, I, I don't even want to know what's uh, what's going on uh, from the raid. Uh, hey, Austin, uh, Jill was doing something with dogs on GitHub. Please do tell, because I don't know what you're doing. Another AI maybe, because uh, we were talking about, you know, identifying dogs can be difficult with the vision sometimes. <laughs> well, actually, one of my versions of this talk uh, for, um, I think it was uh, .NET Conf, I actually had a model identify my pets. So I kept bringing my pets in and the dog was actually identified because it was the difference between the, the dog and the bird. <laughs> okay. And birds are actually kind of hard to, to detect. I didn't know that, but they are. All right, so now when we go to our stream, we should see a message saying it's going to load a new model. Hmm. Hopefully. Does it get confused, like, if you have, like, green screen in the background like this? Uh, no, right? It shouldn't. Oh, it linked. Yeah, I know, but it didn't stay up long enough. Progress oh, Ninja. There you go. Yay. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. Power BI. Yep, Power BI. Yeah, does this have an audio out? Because like it's it's trying to show. I, I can hear my voice back. Where is that playing from? I don't know. 
Well, I guess .NET Ninja is not really one that's. It's like it's. This is an older logo. I don't even want to identify it. <laughs> I guess it wants to detect it kind of over here. Well, I guess I think the, yeah, maybe the green is too much because it does say Solans, yeah, right there. Yeah. Like again, against you, it can detect. Maybe the green screen is confusing it. Oh, there you go. Now it's a little bit more immediate. Maybe. Yeah, but everybody's now got has uh, has uh, car sickness. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe it is the green screen that's really throwing things off. There we go. Yeah. And uh, maybe you froze for a second. Let's see if you come back. Or maybe it's just my network. It should. Yeah, there's one. Flips. There we go. I've been and hearing you. I don't know. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> You're back. All right. Well, that is. That. No, this is this is well done because like. You, you see how much quicker this is. Like I can do similar things. Uh, oh, full froze, but now, now we're back. Yeah, now we're back. Why am I freezing? I don't know why. No, it could, could be me as well. So it's hard to know. Okay. Um, but even, even with this, like the speed of detection is perceptible. Like for me to take a live feed and run it up to Azure and bring back down, that's a round trip and you are doing it instantaneously. Yeah. Well, that again, that model is being like, I created that model specifically for those five stickers yeah. and it, it got sent down to, to the device and into mm -hmm. that I module. So I do want to show you that there are other demos available. So there's sample vision models. There's general object detection. That's the default one that we had at the start that thought everything was a toothbrush. Mm -hmm. People detection, products on shelf, vehicle detection. Um, there's also um, voice assistant. So I'm actually going to go ahead and take this one right here, and I'm going to create that. So this one will actually create um, a little bit more uh, resources. Oh, this is Louis. So language understanding as a service. Yeah. So it has to actually deploy the speech resource to it though. So we're going to let that one go. Um, and I want to go back to, let's go back to Percept. I want to keep that one going just so I can keep track of it. All right. So some of the, the demos that are available. So you have the voice assistant template. So the one I did was the hospitality. You have healthcare, inventory, and automotive. And that's different ways of having and interacting with the, that audio module. Um, but some of the other ones, uh, where was it? Is it this one? No, that wasn't it. Let's go back. I'm trying to remember where that uh, people counter was. Hold on, I, uh, it's like, 7 p.m. Eastern time, so all of my lights went pink, which I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> Too pink much automation. Fine. No, it's fine for most other nights, but not when I'm actually in front of a computer and working. All right. So if I actually you come to the home page of uh, Percept Studio, sample applications are there, and that's where you'd find that people counting. Mm -hmm. And then you could see the documentation. And then within the documentation, you also have the source code for it too. So again, you can use that as your foundation, but still rely mm -hmm. on Percept to do like all the heavy lifting for you. So that's uh, that's nice there. Maybe I can close that. There's my chair. <laughs> well, that's always good. Let's try that um, one more time. While you're doing this, like, how, how is the community around this? Like, are people, you know, uh, are you know, are they open source models or are people helping out? I think it's more more targeted towards enterprise and businesses. Like, I've I've seen people playing around with it. Like, there's a guy that actually created a model 
um, and trained it in his car. So he had the camera going and he was taking pictures and he was identifying cars and things like that. Um, but that again is like more or less having fun with it, but you can create something useful directly from um, just these foundational things like the people yeah. counting, for instance, like if you had safety issues and you like you didn't, it needed to identify people and whether they're wearing hard hats, for instance, right. a lot of those things are made and simplified so much um, easier for businesses because they don't have to go out and buy, you know, figure out the hardware piece. They don't have to build the hardware. They don't have to manufacture the hardware. They can just go and buy these Percept devices, deploy them, and then use them directly out of the box. If they needed to add extra things, like we showed how you could add like your own IoT Edge modules to receive the, the telemetry out of the I module, for instance, and be able to react directly on the device to those. And then stream analytics, if you had downstream processing that you wanted to do as well. So again, fully extensible. And if it's not exactly what you need, you can use that as a starting point. And it's all out on GitHub and you're able to, um, to extend it or change it however you need to there. Yeah, yeah. No, what you said, uh, like at the very beginning, is is very much what this is. It's just an out of the box solution with the hardware and the software all together. Yeah. Computer, set the temperature to sixty eight degrees. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Computer, turn on the television. Very impressive. Very impressive. And this one's using Lewis again to identify yeah. the uh, the little intent. actions, the intents, intents yeah, in, in what you're saying, doing yeah. the actions. But that is set up through the audio mo audio module. I wanted to say it all together again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but again, what's really nice is that it takes like all that hardware development step out. So there are like tons and tons of certified IoT devices out there, but I like Percept in the case that it's specifically for audio and visual inputs and AI. So yeah. that, you know, is, is very attractive for, for me at least, even though I do like getting into the sensors and everything, that stuff is, you know, it yeah. takes time. Yeah, and like you said, like the confidence that an enterprise might have to roll out with something that they know works, and especially for like safety scenarios, this is nice. Yeah. Oh, very cool, very cool. Anything else that you want to mention about Percept? Uh, I don't think so. Do you have any other questions? Uh, <laughs> How long do you have this? <laughs> I, I, I know you're into IoT, and I'm intrigued a lot. Uh, I, I need to find more time to tinker myself, but this is, you know, very interesting stuff. Uh, how, how about I ask you this? Like, given that you're in this space, like, what is, like, a super fun and useful IoT uh, implementation that you're seeing? And maybe what is something that's a little cringeworthy? Oh, my gosh. Okay, well... I'm trying to figure out what what IoT projects I can talk about. Oh, that's true. Um, okay. I know that they're. How about um, hot tub company? <laughs> <laughs> they have uh, sensors that identify like the chemical levels inside of the pools, as well as the the temperatures and the um, wear and tear, if you will, of the internal components. So you're Taking things so like so that's pretty useful. No, this is not cringeworthy. Or you're saying that's not this cringeworthy. Is no, this one's okay. useful. Okay, good, good, good. This one's useful. So they have like the vibration detection for like some of the motors. So if it, things get off keel, if you will, that those things will be identified. Obviously, for the safety of people, you know, to be able to monitor things like the chemical levels mm -hmm. and the temperature, um, you can set different alerts that way. Same thing with regularly maintenance. Like I, even my car right now, it tells me how much oil left I have. And I can look on my phone and see that my tire pressure is, you know, is, is set up right. Um, so those are, you know, beneficial 
approaches to IoT. It's cringeworthy ones. I don't know if there's anything that I would consider total cringeworthy. Like, obviously, when we're talking about AI, we need to be responsible. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, like if you're doing like uh, people counting or something like that, you need to make sure that you're using it in a context that it actually makes mm -hmm. sense, that you're not identifying, okay, how many times has Bob been in for coffee yeah, in my okay. lobby? Oh, you no, know, no. you don't the need whole, to know that. <laughs> yeah, the whole facial detection thing is very, you know, yeah, it, it infringes very quickly on, you know, privacy rights. Well, that's actually one of the warnings. So if you actually go in and use some of the facial detection services on Microsoft, you cannot be working for a law agency. Right. You actually have to check that box physically and say, I'm using this not in a legal aspect. Right. So mm -hmm. when I say cringeworthy, it's like people that might be applying AI in uh, a not so good way. So yeah. obviously, you know, when it comes to things like safety, like the use case of, you know, people not wearing helmets in construction areas or something like that, obviously that's like a, a safety issue. You don't necessarily have to identify, you know, who's doing it. You can have your metric and your KPI just saying, you know, 98% of you are wearing your hard hats, but 2% aren't. And if they're not hitting the KPI, then they could set up a message to like the entire company, yeah. for instance. So yeah. cringeworthy, I guess, people that are not using AI responsibly. Yeah. And you, you mentioned like uh, your, your car and, and it's not exactly like IoT, but I am, you know, uh, really intrigued by how far some of this like remote tech has come. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the the things we can do to our cars from halfway across the world are just amazing. Like, uh, the, I mean, uh, our cars have cameras, you know, uh, all around, and you can like take a picture of you know virtual you know surrounding. Like, talk about safety, where you might have parked, and you are you know heading up to it. You want to know what's around your car, uh, and you know recording things, uh, you know that happen in front or you know next to your car. Mm -hmm. That that type of thing is very useful for safety. It definitely is. Yeah. And then you can actually, um, so the interface, and I always, it's OBD, I see, I think, I don't know. The connector that you could actually connect into your the computer of your car, you can actually download. Oh, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Interface with your car if you wanted mm -hmm. to do something yourself that way. So that it's a well-known interface to, yeah. to use that as well. Indeed, indeed. And of course, now, because I said computer, this thing is <laughs> telling me listen. it didn't quite catch that. Oh, we needed, uh, oh, and um, uh, while we're wrapping up, uh, chat room, let us know if you have any, any questions here for Carrie. Um, but we need our good friend, uh, so Carrie and we both know, Jeff Blankenberg, who works, uh, you know, with the AI assistant that cannot be named on stream because mm -hmm. like our lights. Turn yeah, I have one right in front of me and it would go yeah, nuts. Me, so. me it, starts too, me too. <laughs> it starts with A, ends <laughs> with a big X, but we just can't can't quite say it. But, uh, you know, we, we, we pull his leg about the things that the AI assistant gets confused about. But it's it's a hard job. It's a, it's a lot of AI. And uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, things have come a long way, and you know, home automation is it's it's a it's a never-ending bug once it bites you. Oh, I know. I've got uh, <laughs> I've got all sorts of stuff, homemade and not homemade. <laughs> so. Indeed, indeed. It's trying to see how much uh, do you want to change the temperature by. Oh well, oh, did I'm you see the temperature? Good. Well, there we go. There's it picked you up. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> well, this is funny because we said computer. <laughs> you want to make it warmer or cooler? It's getting very confused. Just tell me, warmer or cooler? What do you want? Cooler. <laughs> oh, it raised the temperature by one. Interesting. Computer, raise the temperature by five. That's pretty one point. Computer, yeah. turn off the TV. <laughs> I wouldn't mind having this in my hotel room. Why not? Yeah, but the thing is, is like you could you could hook this up 
yourself with using the percept so you don't have to you know solder your own microphones onto any boards or anything and Could be able to set up your home automation that way sure. right. okay how do people get started with azure percept like start with the docs I start with buying the hardware actually <laughs> yeah step one get the stuff so, uh i think it's uh Purchase Azure Purchase. I think it's in the is Microsoft it, Store, honestly. Okay. I guess it's is it game. widely available though? It is available in most countries, I think. Most regions. <laughs> Singapore and Europe. So yeah. If you have the Microsoft Store, feel free to, to use that. Um, I think it's available most places in the world, but it, there, it could be blacked out in certain areas. Oh, and that's the rack that you were talking about. You can just like slide that on. Yeah, that's what I meant. It's like mm -hmm. this is a, a com common interface yeah. <laughs> inside of manufacturing. So you just essentially slide them up. And then like I mentioned before, um, the actual vision modules have two port so even though there's only one camera on it you can actually add two cameras per um, module so that's how that works yeah very cool very cool well uh well thanks for tinkering with this so you could come and educate us and get us thinking um because uh, now we need to spend the money and start tinkering ourselves yeah, nothing's ever free, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, this is very good stuff. Um, yeah, right. Uh, doesn't look like any more questions here from the chat room, but uh, this was very enlightening for me. I had no idea what Azure Percept was, so you have gotten me very interested and excited. Well, my pleasure. All right, so um, I think you might still have a little time in the evening. Uh, to go do stuff, you know, with your family on your birthday. Uh, so I will not keep you for any longer than we had to. So thank you. Thank you so much. And, you know, chat room, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, hopefully this was fun. And, uh, you know, it is a user group meeting. So uh, this is the time where we all break for pizza, which we can't have. We, we try some Mondays. We'll, we'll try having pizza, Carrie, but it doesn't work out every, <laughs> every Monday. Yeah. So uh, whatever you might be eating for dinner, I hope it's good. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening. And Carrie, happy birthday again. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for, for doing this. I'm going to bring your desktop down. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you doing for having this. me. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think that's the stream. So hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, uh, Carrie. And uh, the rest of you all take care. We'll see you on the next stream. All right, then. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.